Okay. Um, the appointed hour of six o'clock having been reached, I call this meeting of the Amherst Zoning Board of Appeals to order. My name is Steve Judge, and as ZBA Chair, I want to welcome everyone to this meeting. Pursuant to Chapter 20 of the Acts of 2021, this meeting will be conducted via remote means. Members of the public who wish to access the meeting may do so via Zoom or by telephone. No in-person attendance of members of the public will be permitted, but every effort will be made to ensure that the public can adequately access the proceedings in real time via technological means. Additionally, the meeting, recording, the meeting is recording, recorded and can be viewed via the Town of Amherst YouTube channel and ZBA webpage. In accordance with the provisions of Massachusetts General Laws, Chapter 40A and Article 10, Special Permit Granting Authority of the Amherst Zoning Bylaw, this public meeting has been duly advertised and notice thereof has been posted and mailed to parties at interest. We'll begin with a roll call of the members of the ZBA and panel for tonight's meeting. Um, Mr. Judge, I'm here. Ms. Parks? Here. Mr. Maxfield? Here. Mr. Gilbert? Here. Mr. Cochran? Here. Also in attendance is Maureen Pollock, planner, uh, Dave Washevitz, building inspector, and uh, Rob Mora, building commissioner, is expected to join us. The Zoning Board of Appeals is a quasi-judicial body that operates under the authority of Chapter 40A of the General Laws of the Commonwealth for the purpose of promoting the health, safety, and convenience and general welfare of the inhabitants of the town of Amherst. One of the most important elements of the Amherst Zoning Bylaw is Section 10.38. Specific findings from this section must be made for our decisions. All hearings and meetings are open to the public and are recorded by town staff. The procedure is as follows. The petitioner presents the application to the board during the hearing, after which the board will ask for questions and for clarifications or additional information. After the board has completed its questions, the board will seek public input. The public speaks with the permission of the chair. If a member of the public wishes to speak, they should so indicate by using the raise hand function on their screen. The chair, with the assistance of the staff, will call upon people wishing to speak. When you are recognized, provide your name and address to the board for the record. All questions and comments must be addressed to the board. The board will normally hold public hearings where the information about a project and the input from the public is gathered, followed by a public meeting for each. The public meeting portion is where the board deliberates and is generally not an opportunity for public comment. If the board feels it has enough information and time, it will decide upon the applications tonight. Each petition heard by the board is distinct and evaluated on its own merit, and the board is not ruled by precedent. Statutorily for a special permit, the board has 90 days from the close of hearing to file a decision. For a variance, the board has 100 days from the date of filing of the, of the request for variance to file its decision. No decision is final until the written decision is signed by the sitting board members and is filed in the town clerk's office. Once the decision is filed with the town clerk, there is a 20 day appeal period for an agreed party to contest the decision with a relevant judicial body in superior court. After the appeal period, the permit must be recorded at the registry of deeds to take effect. Tonight's agenda is a public hearing on ZBA FY2022-04. FY Greg Briggs and Howard R. Paul request a special permit to modify the previously approved special permit ZBA FY 2002-21 in order to remove condition seven, which states this permit shall expire upon change of ownership or management. Located at 19 Phillips Street, map 11A, parcel 34, general residence, RG zoning district. <clears throat> ZBA FY 2022-05, Lane V. Floyd, requests a special permit to modify the previously approved special permit, ZBA FY 2011-04, in order to remove condition 13, which states this permit shall expire upon change of ownership. Located at 204 and 206 Belchertown Road, map 15C, parcel 32, Neighborhood Residence, RN Zoning District. 
and ZBA FY 2022-06, Lane V. Floyd, requests a special permit to modify the previously approved special permit, ZBA FY 2011-03, in order to remove condition 12, which states, this permit shall expire upon change of ownership. Located at 192 and 194 Belchertown Road, map 15C, parcel 64, neighborhood residence, RN zoning district. Following considerations of those uh, matters, there's an opportunity for general public comment on any matter not discussed before the board tonight, as well as a opportunity for other business not anticipated within the last 48 hours. The first item on the agenda is ZBA FY 2022-04, Greg Briggs and Howard R. Paul request a special permit to modify the previously approved special permit ZBA 2002-21 in order to remove condition seven, which states this permit shall expire upon change of ownership or management. Located at 19 Phillips Street, map 11A, parcel 34, general residence, RG zoning districts. Are there any disclosures? Um, we had a site visit uh, last Tuesday. Um, we met at the property. We walked the, around the property. We observed the parking area um, and the, uh, the entrance and egress to the building itself. We got into to the uh, back unit first, um, observed the, the, each of the rooms in the, um, in the second unit, um, walked through that unit, walked out the front, observed the side of the building, uh, got into the main unit, observed the, the um, and prior to that, we observed the basement as well. We observed uh, each of the living areas as well as the bedroom um, areas and bathrooms in the uh, front unit. And we came back out and walked around the front of the house. I wanna say that I appreciate very much the, um, the uh, cooperation of the owners and um, of the property. I know we were trying to, we, were, we had a sec, we scheduled this, uh, we continued this from last time because we did not do a, 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 a site visit. I think it was important that we do one, and um, I appreciate their cooperation uh, in this, in the property owner and the tenants as well, who made themselves uh, available for us to observe the unit interior and exterior. Um, is there anything else that people who were on that site visit want to add, um, either members or staff, that I missed? That's pretty much it, I think. Um, the following submissions have been received by town staff. They are uh, a memo from attorney Tom Reed dated September 2nd, a waiver request memo from attorney Tom Reed dated September 2nd, ZBA special permit 2022-04 special permit application prospective purchaser's management plan, the additional information required for apartments, prospective purchaser's lease plan, ZBA 2002-21 approved special permit, that's the existing special permit, an email from attorney Reedy dated October 26th, a parking plan dated October 26th, 2022. I also think that we received a, I read a note from the, uh, prospective owner, Mr. Killian O'Connell, as well as we have a list of, of um, complaints filed with the town um, of property, um, but we'll go through that in a second. And town staff submissions of the project application report dated October 26th. We also had one early for the earlier meeting, a residential rental property permit, a landscape plan with lighting, trash storage, and parking dated um, 2003, uh, 2000, uh, approved 2003 condition six under ZBA special permit, the zoning map, uh, ZBA requested items for the, for the ZBA application 2022-04, uh, a list of complaints filed on properties owned by Keller and Properties LLC, project application report dated October 26th. We also received waiver requests from the applicant 
uh, for a building plan, a lighting plan, a sign plan, a site plan, a lighting plan, and a landscape plan. We've got uh, repeated there, but, um, but five waiver requests. Um, is there anything else that people want that was submitted? Maureen, I think we covered it all, didn't we? Yes, you did. Uh, so who's here to, to present for the applicant? It is um, I, Chair. <laughs> Mr. Reedy, and for the prospective owner? Oh. Alan, you're muted. You, you're muted, Alan. Rookie mistake. My apologies. <laughs> Alan St. Hilaire Valley Property Management um, in the capacity of management for the prospective purchaser. Got it. And just need the address to cut off, cut you off, Mr. Reedy, for your address. And Mr. Sure. Tom Reedy, well. Turner, Bacon Wilson, uh, here in Amherst, 6 Southeast Street. And Mr. Hilaire, who are you affiliated with? Uh, Valley Property Management, 35 University Drive, Amherst. Thank you very much. Mr. Mm -hmm. Reedy, do you want to proceed? Yeah, sure. Thank you very much, Mr. Chair, uh, members of the board, Mr. Waskevich, Ms. Pollock. For the record, Tom Reedy, attorney with Bacon Wilson uh, in Amherst. I mean, I think the, the chair summed it up pretty well. And I think Ms. Pollock's project application report does a really good job of, of summarizing, I think, where we are. I know we were here October 14th, had some, I think, very good productive discussions. Subsequently, there was a site visit on, I think it was this past Tuesday. Um, hopefully everybody saw, you know, the ones that were able to make it out there. And if you weren't, hopefully you're able to drive by. Phillips Street's a tough street. I think uh, the current owners have done a, a, a good job of maintaining that property. Um, you know, I, there, there's a three bedroom, uh, which under the permit can't exceed four folks in it. And then there's a two bedroom, which under the permit can't exceed three folks in it. I think you heard at the site visit that there are less than those numbers in there now, we're not looking to change any of that. We are just looking to uh, eliminate or as it were, modify the condition that would cause this to expire upon change of ownership. And so, um, you know, I, I saw the language in the project application report and I uh, had gone back to Ms. Pollock a little earlier today with some suggested language based upon really what we had talked about last time relative to uh, a mortgagee and, uh, and a lender and what they would be looking for to, you know, effectively loan on this property as a, as a two family property, for lack of a better phrase, instead of a single family. Um, and so I think as far as like the, the instant owner is concerned and you walk through, you saw the type of ship that they run and we have asked, and I think the town had asked Alan to be here and I know that um, you, you probably have some questions for him. I'm happy to answer anything else, but to a certain extent, it feels like there's a little bit of a transition happening. So I'm happy to, like I said, answer any questions, but if, if you wanna to talk to Alan, I can be quiet. Thank you, um, Mr. St. Hilaire. Um, one of the things we're looking at, as you know, is um, conditions, having, first of all, having a conversation with the, the new owner or his agent and, and management. So if you could speak to, the way in which you um, will manage this property going forward, any changes, and there might be some questions from the board um, if they're change about your management of the property going forward. Sure, I'd be happy to do that. Um, just to give you a little background on our company, we've been in business in Amherst since 2013, and I've been in management in Amherst since 2006. So we've got a, a broad experience base and, and have, a, I feel, a good working relationship with everybody in town, including town officials. Um, and for, for uh, the relevance to this particular property, we do manage three, uh, two three-unit buildings at the other end of Phillips Street at the intersection of Nutting Ave and Phillips Street. Uh, to great success. Uh, very, very few complaints on that property over the years. Occasionally, you know, noise complaints for voices on a porch and things of that nature, but nothing uh, of any severity. Uh, along with multiple other properties, we've got a few properties along Lincoln Ave and some other areas of town where, you know, the neighborhoods are sensitive and the folks are watching and, and we're watching. So, uh, you know, we do weekly checkups on the properties. Um, one of the questions that came up, uh, Ms. Pollock, unfortunately, I didn't get a chance to get back to you because it came to me so late in the day, but it was about parking and managing the parking on the property. 
uh, we check up on our properties at least by drive-by and if something looks off you know by walk around the actual property uh, every week and so if there is an issue with parking if, if there is a historical issue with parking i'm unaware of that but if that was just a general inquiry uh, we do check up on properties. Uh, I'm not aware of a parking issue at this property. We don't manage it now, but we do provide services to the current landlords in the capacity of finding, screening, and placing tenants. So we are familiar with the property. We're familiar with the neighborhood. We're familiar with the owners and some of the issues uh, that have kind of uh, come up in that neighborhood with other owners that um, will remain unnamed um that have you know kind of caused problems for a lot of landlords in town but anyhow uh we do try to keep things upbeat on track um on the straight and narrow and uh i don't see that being any different here at this property um and we're always available if there are uh need for correction corrective actions complaint responses uh, we're here so so just so we understand the current status, the um, your client, Mr. St. Hilaire, is in the process of purchasing this property. Is this transaction completed or has it, what's, what's the current status of the transaction? Uh, it is not completed. Uh, the, the transaction is pending on the outcome of tonight's meeting and the recording mm -hmm. of the decision there to I made okay. reference to the current owners who are also clients of mine, but in a smaller capacity where we find and place tenants for them. We don't provide full service management. Got it. Um, I had a couple of questions regarding the, your client, Mr. St. Hilaire. We've got a letter from him um, which expresses frustration he has had over some of the properties that he's owned over 25 years, having um, complaints um, and even some uh, fairly serious complaints about, um, uh, I don't know what the technical term is, but the condition of the house. There's numerous noise complaints as well. Um, I, I went through those complaints and looked at complaints that came from property that um, is owned by that company. And we've got 10 complaints in 2019, I think seven complaints in 2018. No complaints in 2020 because I think there weren't many as many students around as also the town wasn't it just wasn't as there aren't very many complaints in 2020 because of the pandemic but he did say that um since you became manager of money of his properties that those conditions that those complaints have um been reduced when did you start managing a lot of their properties uh, in november of november of 2019 2019 so perhaps so right now we don't have any complaints in 2020 that i see on the list since you began managing, is that correct? That's correct. Yeah. Okay. Um, the other thing I want to, I want to establish that uh, number two, Phillips Street can be a challenge for a landlord and the management company. It's uh, right next to the college. There's uh, a dearth of parking, but there's um, lots of people there, and I think now there's an awful lot of cars associated with students, probably more so than certainly when, when I went to school. Uh, much more likely for kids to have cars. One of the things that I have noticed, I drove past the property uh, several times, and I know you don't manage it currently, but the current zone uh, permit, special permit provides for four parking spaces. I went by there twice. Once there was six and once there were seven cars parked in the lot uh, behind, along the side and in the lot behind the, the area. So it seems to me that there is potential there for, because it's a good big, it's, a, it's an adequate parking space for maybe more than four cars. But right now, I think that there's a challenge in trying, it seems to me that there's a challenge in trying to limit the cars to those for the parking plan. So I'd be interested in, I read your prospective parking plan uh, that you submitted to the, um, to the board and you don't have any way of, of um, you don't put stickers on the car, but you, you, see, you say that the cars have to be registered with your, your um, um, management company. Is there a way to, um, would you consider having some kind of a sticker program so that there, if there is excess cars there it's, it's, uh, and that are not allowed to be there, they can easily be identified and removed if that's a problem? Right now, it seems to me it'd be difficult to know which ones are your tenants and which ones are the right cars to, which ones have a right to be there. 
I agree, Mr. Chair. I, I think that I'm at a bit of a disadvantage because I don't have the current leases presently to reference and see well, how many cars they're allowed and any other yep. measures that are in those leases to control them. Uh, we do have uh, a sticker program available. We don't put it in place unless it's necessary, uh, but we have hang tags that we can tie back to individual vehicle registrations and residents so that we can you know, allow four stickers out there. Uh, and, and we work closely with Ernie's towing if necessary. Mm -hmm. Other vehicles can be removed. I think another thing that could be communicated to those residents is if they have guests, uh, they'll need to park legally on street as opposed to on the property. I think there's a number of side streets where street parking is permitted in that neighborhood. Um, and they could park their vehicles there as opposed to congesting the property. Probably. So yes, the answer is we can certainly accommodate that. One other thing I noticed is that it's that the special permit provides for four parking spaces. The lease provides for five parking spaces. This is a 20 some year old permit. Things have just changed or people have just um, modified their lease. So you would want to take a look at that when you have your new, new lease for your, your um, tenants. And I would think you might want to have, I think there is more than enough space for five parking places on that park property. Um, I, it looks to me like you can accommodate five cars easily without causing trouble there. And I would wonder if you would be, if it would be an advantage to the, to the landowner and, and to you to have additional parking, I think would be a benefit to the neighborhood to take a, a, a car off the street and have it in parked efficiently and safely back behind the property. I would agree. Okay. So um, it seems to me that on parking then, one of the things that it's not contained in your parking management plan, but it would, I would, it would seem to me that if you could come up with a sticker plan and um, an amendment, and we can amend the parking plan, to the uh, conditions to have five parking spaces that probably solves the park, I think it solves the parking problem. Um, if we could do that, if you'd be agreeable to doing that. Or hang, hang tag provision. If you could, you could submit that post this meeting uh, and just have it adopted by the, uh, reviewed by the town staff. Sure. Would you be, okay, that'd be great. I'd be happy to do that. In fact, I have, and you know, we've provided samples to other ZBA proceedings. Yep. If you have one handy that I can kind of hold up to the camera to show everybody here. So we could submit a copy of that. Uh, and what we do is just write on the back side of them with a Sharpie marker, the vehicle description and plate number, and that gets tied back in our records to the vehicle owner. Uh, so it makes it very easy for our staff or for Ernie Stowing to come in and enforce any unauthorized vehicles. And the nice thing about the hang tags is if someone goes home and needs to get tires on their car and brings their mother's car back for the following week, they can transfer that tag and, and not get towed erroneously as opposed to right. a permanently affixed sticker. Sticker, yep. I'm and they familiar are with... sequentially numbered so that we know that there's not duplicates out there. I'm familiar with some of your other properties having that um, sticker or that tag pro, uh, program. It makes sense to me. So um, seems to me that that's a condition we can just make that you get back to the town with that and amend the parking plan uh, that's contained in the submissions to incorporate the, um, the hang tag. Okay. That sounds good. Um, the, other, the last thing is that I, the last question I have is on lighting. Um, this, this permit was back in 2002 or it's 20 some years ago before there was cons consideration of uh, dark, star dark sky compliant lighting. I, I don't think that it's reasonable for um, the board to require replacement of existing lights, but to the extent whenever you are going to replace an addition, an, a, a, a existing light because it's malfunctioned, it's old, or you're putting up new lighting, uh, dark sky compliant lighting would be um, would make sense, and I think it would. Uh, we do it consistently across the board at the at all of our special permits now. Um, would that be a problem for the the owner, Mr. Saint Hilaire, to no, that would not be a problem. Okay. Uh, and we have some experience, as you know, with, with the dark sky compliant lighting and properly lighting parking areas. So we're, we're happy to include that and keep that in mind. Good. Um, I have, that concludes 
my initial questions. Uh, questions from members of the board. All right. Um, no further questions from members of the board. Let me just run through. I was hoping there would be because I would run through. <laughs> I want to review the conditions again, but just give me a second. I want to make sure that I have covered all the items. Oh, there's there's one other thing I did notice that when you review the lease, Mr. St. Hilaire, uh, make sure that there is the, the, the the occupancy numbers are consistent. I noticed at some places that the occupancy numbers in the lease and um, are not consistent. And so just review that. It's not a big deal, but it should be done if you would do that. Um, that's it. And I noticed you did uh, you did have a complaint response form, and that is or a nuisance. You call it a nuisance response form, and that is um, to contact your business and your twenty four seven operation. Okay, so I'm satisfied with that. Um, one of the conditions that we are going to, that I think we should consider is, been, and it's been modified since the project application report um, was presented to the board or passed out to the board is, and we'll discuss this during the public meeting portion specifically, but I wanna get it on the record. This um, basically the, the condition would say, instead of the expiration upon transfer, the permit shall expire upon change of ownership unless prior to the change of ownership, the prospective property owner shall apply before the, to appear before the Zoning Board of Appeals at a public hearing for review and approval of the management plan, complaint response plan, parking plan and, man, and map lease agreement, and to determine whether additional conditions are needed to meet section 10.38 findings under the zoning bylaw. Notice shall be made in accordance to general laws, chapter 40A, section 11 of ZBA rules and regulations. Notwithstanding the foregoing, the foreclosure by a mortgagee on the property shall not cause a permit to expire, provided that the mortgagee or purchaser under contract to purchase from the mortgagee follows the process of this condition within 60 days of its foreclosure. In other words, the, the bank has would have 60 days in which to uh, comply with the um, coming to, to the board and reviewing the complaint response form and et cetera, the mark parking management form. Um, and under that, in that condition, it seems to me that you have um, met the requirements of that condition. Um, but that's one of the conditions that we will that I would want to consider for this uh, uh, special permit application. Are there, if there's no comments from the board, uh, we should open it up to comments from the public. Maureen, do we have anybody from the public that wishes to? Comment. If anyone from the public wishes to speak, they would press the button, raise your hand, or if you're calling in, you would press star nine. I'm not seeing any raise. I don't see hand. any either. Okay. So there's no uh, no, no need for you to respond to public comments. Um, I think the next order would be to move to a public meeting while keeping the public hearing open um, in case we need to gather additional information. And I would entertain a motion that we move to a public meeting on this matter while keeping open the public hearing. Is there a motion to that effect? So moved. I hear a motion. Is there a second? Second. Is there a second? Is there any discussion on the motion? If not, the vote occurs on the motion. This requires a majority vote. Uh, and it's a roll call vote. The chair votes aye. Ms. Parks? Aye. Mr. Maxfield? Aye. Mr. Gilbert? Aye. Mr. Cochran? Aye. So we're now in the public meeting. That's the time for the board to consider and discuss um, and vote on conditions, findings, and the and approve or reject the application for the special permit. Um, but first, I think I'd like to get a sense of where um, people are. If there's a anything that we did not cover over the either in the in the project application report and the 
uh, possible conditions or anything that is new to you today that would um, that you want to discuss before we go through conditions and other things uh, and findings. Mr. Maxfield. I was going to say, um, I like the wording of the, that new condition. I think it, it addresses a lot of the issues um, I had with it. I, I still think at some point we should probably have administrative meeting to try to just look at our own procedures. Um, but um, I guess my, my, my question is still here, especially looking at some of these complaints here is how really, how are we, we just enforcing any of this? Is this also a question really for, for administrative meetings to see how are we doing enforcement? How are we doing procedures? Cause I, I, I like that condition. I think it sounds good. I don't want to hold up this application because we need to get um, right. some of our own things together on this. But just in, in this case, uh, really, what is our plan? Or is this really not not even the time for it? That's something we should maybe do a couple months from now. Uh, what, what are your thoughts on that, Mr. Chair? First of all, I think you raise a really good point. And it's one that I've discussed with the staff um, on several times. And I think we mentioned it last meeting. We should have, there's two things that we should be, three things that we should be doing on an administrative meeting. I think we'd all benefit from having somebody go through how to read a set plan. That's still gonna be valuable because they're not all gonna be this easy. I still like that notion, but we're going to be coming up on this matter. We are going to be seeing lots of these um, special permits that have that specific provision that seven that it lapses on the time of uh, transfer of ownership uh, because they're, were, they were done 10 to 20 years ago. It's just kind of a natural roll off of some of these special permits. And I think properties will sell for a good reason and we're likely to see some of that. So I think it'd be good to talk through the reason that we think this is a good, as a board, talk through this provision, which I think is a model, at least a template for now, and see if we're comfortable with it. And I think we should do that in an administrative meeting. And the other, the other thing that I think you raised, which is really good, is that we should understand better the, the uh, capabilities and the uh, of the town to do enforcement and when they can enforce and when they can't what they need it from the you know in terms of a complaint what their authority is to go into buildings and to to do health and safety inspections or noise complaints or everything it's just it is it is um something that i, I suspect we are all are not familiar with and so i think that would inform us as to what why some of these conditions are either needed or are superfluous if, the, if it's something that's being handled by the town, maybe a condition isn't needed, but if it's not typically handled by the town, such as parking on the street, or park, too many cars in the parking lot, um, then a condition is needed and get the help of the landlord to enforce that. So I think that's something we should do in November if we get a chance, um, sooner rather than later, uh, and it'd be a good, a good time for administrative meeting. I know that's not right on point, but it's a good time to ask a question and we can proceed from, from now on. Right? And look towards that. Good. Any other questions or comments about the conditions and the findings? Tammy or uh, Ms. Parks. Hi. Um, I just wondered. Um, I, I wasn't able to make it to the site um, visit, and I'm just wondering. Some of I'm just reading um, through the project application report, and it was. Uh, there's a, a lot of comments the board may wish to observe the current conditions and I'm just wondering if you would if uh, people who did go on the site visit would comment on the vehicles I think um, Mr. Judge you were talking about the fact that there's room for five vehicles um, did anyone uh, observe the trash storage bins that yes we did control? To answer your question, uh, we did. We were along the side of the, the um, eastern side of the house, and under the current ownership, it's a responsibility of the tenant to move those out to the street. I think on uh, Wednesday or Tuesday, but there, there wasn't a. I don't think there was a um, a fenced trash area, but just large trash cans that were that are kept along the side of the house. Okay. Um, Is that what, does, does anybody else remember that? John, uh, Mr. Gilbert and Mr. Cochran? Um, I also provided uh, photographs of um, the site visit 
Oh, okay. um, everyone should have received that and I can certainly pull that up if that's helpful. Do, could you do that? I'm sorry, I don't, I can't, I can't look at the split screen right now. <laughs> Sorry. And I, the other thing I was just worrying, uh, wondering about is the vegetation, if you felt that it was adequate and, um, and that a landscaping plan wasn't needed. You know, it was hard to judge. I, I would say, Ms. Parks, that it was hard to judge whether the landscaping was um, adequate right now because it's mostly grass around the front, a narrow strip in the back. The grass around the front, as you can see from these pictures, um, could use more tender loving care, but it was generally picked up. The grass on the side seemed to be in better shape, not this side, but the other side. And once you get in the back, it's it's all parking uh, area. So the only place I would say that, and it wasn't unusual in the neighborhood, but the um, the grass in front could have, could have used more tender loving care, but there wasn't uh, it wasn't outrageous, and I've seen worse. You see on the back, it's the side, it's fine. And there is a, there is, um, la, um, a fence and bushes that shield the parking lot and the neighbor from the, uh, from the next door neighbors on both sides. So. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Well, if there's no other questions, I'd like to start to proceed to consideration of conditions. Um, what I'd like to do is run through the conditions that are proposed by staff, um, review those, and at the end, um, unless there's an objection to one of these conditions, uh, incorporate vote on those conditions and then go back and do our findings because I think it's you, you can't do the findings unless you have the conditions approved. So the first condition is the language that was distributed. Maureen, did everybody get this language um, on the, uh, the expiration of the permit or can we put that up on the on the board? Yeah, let's put that up on the on the screen. And I'll ask Rob also to opine on this because um, we worked, I know, with Maureen and Rob and Dave on this language. Um, but as you can see, as opposed to the, the permit expiring upon transfer of ownership, my concern with that is that we, that we don't have the ability under the um, existing um, conditions and uh, limitations on special permits to bring in the new management and talk to them. We don't have the ability to make changes on those conditions because the changes that might have occurred over the last 20 years, changes in the neighborhood. We don't have an ability to respond to neighbors who and, and, and then the neighborhood that may be um, um, affected by the existing use of the property. And this gives us the opportunity to correct anything. And also sometimes to help the, the landlord, quite frankly, in case of the, the parking. And it's a good process to have a, um, a discussion about that with about the property and the use at that point in time. Um, so here's what this one says, that it shall expire unless, and then the, unless prior to the change of ownership, the prospective property owner appear before the Zoning Board of Appeals at a public hearing for review and approval of the management plan, the complaint response plan, the parking management plan and map. I think, we're, were we gonna change that language just a little bit, Maureen, I think? Yeah. We're gonna, yeah. Parking plan, parking map, yeah. And the lease agreement to determine whether additional conditions are needed to meet section 10.38 findings under the zoning bylaw. And then we want to make sure this just says that notice has to be made as with any public hearing um, to the public. And notwithstanding the foregoing, the foreclosure by a mortgagee on the property shall not cause the permit to expire, provided that the mortgagee or the purchaser under contract to purchase from the mortgagee follows the process of this condition within 60 days of its foreclosure. I don't know that this property is under um, any uh, threat or under uh, imminent foreclosure. It was something that was brought to our attention from by Mr. Reedy as a possible um, something we should be thinking about 
I know that um, Mr. Mora, Mr. Washevich, and Ms. Pollock and I all discussed this. And it seems that it's probably not a very likely occurrence, but it isn't covered under the the upper the uh, previous paragraph. And this one, I think, would uh, provide us the ability to get the new the mortgagee, that is the bank, if they're owning if they own this, to provide a complaint response plan, a management plan, a parking plan, at least um, after, if they own it for more than sixty days. Are there any questions about that condition? This is new um, and I think it serves as a template, but it's something of course we can change as we move through the um, other applications in the future. So I think if we review the, uh, the possible conditions, um, first is that if you just go up, Maureen, the uh, first one is conditions one, two, three, four, five, and six stay in effect. The second is that uh, we just talked about it. The third is the product, this is standard, these are mostly standard things. The project shall be maintained as needed and any substantial changes from approved plan shall come back before the zoning board. Um, and that include the things that we have talked to them about. The approved management plan and complaint response plan shall be followed by the property owner. Exterior lighting shall be designed and installed to be shielded or downcast. Um, to avoid light trespass and light fixtures shall be selected according to dark sky compliance and ZBA rules. Um, no more than four unrelated individuals shall occupy each unit. I guess, is that, is it supposed to be three for the second unit and four for the first? I think that's right. Um, Mr. Saint, Mr. Reedy, I think that's what the current situation is. Correct. Mr. Mora, uh, Mr. Mora, Mr. St. Hilaire, does that comport with your understanding as well that it's four in the front and three in the back? Uh, that 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 is in line with what I've heard to date and uh, yep. Mr. Reedy has reinforced this evening. Okay, Maureen, we should just change that to four and three. Any dwelling unit on the property being rented shall be registered and permitted in accordance with the residential rental bylaw. The street numbers and for both dwellings should be clearly marked, um, but it was reflective signage. Parking shall occur on improved services only. The parking shall be maintained as needed. Parking and drive should be constructed in accordance with Article 7.1. Um, maximum overnight visitors. This is in the lease. Um, I'm, I'm sure that this is um, agreeable to the current and future owners. Shall be three people, maximum stay of four consecutive nights. And the maximum number of people on the premises at any time should be 20 people. That's outlined in the guest policy. That's consistent with the guest policy outlined in the prospective owner's lease, if I'm not mistaken. Um, and lastly, the property shall be free of litter and debris. We would leave this number eight would be deleted. Are there any questions about these conditions? Mr. Pollock. Ms. Pollock. Uh, so earlier, um, uh, you had asked Alan to submit a parking management plan, um, and he, yeah. had talked, he had shown the board a, a picture of his standard um, parking decal. So, uh, should there be a condition um, stating that that the applic the prospective applicant will submit uh, the parking management plan, which will outline how parking will be managed and enforced by PC? by a hang tag by so. Yeah, as per our discussion, so, but he has to, he does he just has to submit it to the to the uh, commit the building department uh, for uh, approval. He doesn't have to come back to the to the board for that. Okay. All right. And, and I, I just to clarify, I believe that you went through uh, the condition that I've highlighted now about um, any dwelling unit on the property should be rented. And um, registered and permitted in accordance with the rent, yeah, residential okay. rent property yep. bylaw. Right. If I didn't, I should have. Okay. So we have to make findings that if there's no objections to those conditions, we have to make findings under 10.38. For, uh, I guess I would just ask one other thing, Rob, Mr. Mora um, or Mr. Washevis, did you have any comment on 
the conditions and specific, specifically the, the new condition on transfer. These work with for you and is there anything you no, need to I, say about it? I, I, do, I think there uh, I think there's it's a good condition. Um, I do have questions about the the second uh, clause there with the foreclosure. I assume Mr. Reedy suggested it because he thinks that will work. I, I do have questions about the 60 days and actually dealing with a bank. I think if a mortgagee is an individual, I think that works a little smoother, but as a bank or um, a property that goes into foreclosure, with my experience, 60 days isn't really a lot of time to get much done, but I think it's a starting point for the board. Um, I don't think we have to work out every detail tonight, but remember to uh, let's revisit that and make sure that condition, you know, I, I like the idea of what it's doing, yeah. uh, but I, I think maybe it needs a little bit more uh, adjustment. And if I could, Mr. Chair, maybe we put the word sale after foreclosure, just so we're, you know, so it's the foreclosure sale. I'm actually going through something similar um, in East Hampton. And so it's East Hampton Savings Bank that's foreclosed on the two family They've held a foreclosure sale and they're saying to the client, you have to buy it within 30 days of that date. And so that's why I thought 60 days was probably, you know, from that sale, banks don't want to hold it any longer than they need to. Um, so that was just the thinking that 60 days would be sufficient because it's more likely to be that prospective purchaser to get in there than it is really the bank. Only if the bank's buying it back at foreclosure, are they the ones that are going to probably head in? You know, that, but that raises a question. I mean, it's a good suggestion. I understand what you're getting at, but it raises a question for me as well. And that goes to Rob, to Mr. Mora's point. Um, when it's 60 days of foreclosure sale, that means if that bank holds that property for a year or a long period of time, the, um, there is no review of their management plan or anything else in the, in the time being. I'm not sure if that, I don't know the answer to this. So, but they wouldn't technically yeah. own the property during that time, but because but there was the, still a, the 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 person who was the owner, as far as you're concerned, would still have what's called an equity of redemption, so that they would have they actually own the property until the bank actually forecloses, has that foreclosure sale. The for and the foreclosure sale is really like foreclosure by entry. They go in, they have you know Posnick yeah. or somebody do the auction there. So stepping back and saying, to your point, what happens if things go sideways with the person who's owning the property, they're just not um, keeping it up, then I think there's probably the ability, you know, provided that there's sufficiency in the management plan, the lease, et cetera, if you're not seeing the properties being managed according to the management plan, inspection services go, can go in and issue a cease and desist, and then you can get them back in front of the board a lot quicker. Uh, if it's just a delinquent landlord, I guess is the way to put it. But yeah. the bank wouldn't be that new owner, so it wouldn't trigger that change of ownership at that point. This is why it makes sense that this is a start <laughs> on this provision uh, for, and it's because it, it gets complicated. And I think I always I worry also. So anyway, uh, for me, that I think either way works. I think it's a start, and um, I think this is exactly what we need to cover in our administrative meeting. And we can do more work on it then. But I'm happy, I'm fine with the word sale there because I don't think we can solve this problem tonight. Okay, um, we've got to make some findings under 10.38. So 10.38 and 10.381 um, requires that we find that the proposal is suitably located in the neighborhood in which it is proposed and or the town and is deemed appropriate by the special permit granting authority. The proposal is compatible with the existing uses and other uses by right in the same district. And I think we've satisfied that through the uh, condition, is it two, Maureen, on the uh, change of ownership as well as um, lighting and, um, um, and the other conditions that we've placed on the property. Um, 10.382, 383, 385, and 387, all deals with nuisance, I think by changing the um, dark side compliant, uh, if, if, upon change of light fixtures, also on the uh, re reduction in, or increase in the number of, of cars that can park there and reducing the parking on the street. We've uh, reduced the, um, the nuisance. Um, 10.384 requires that we find adequate and appropriate facilities provided for operation of the pr proposed use. That's already, they're already in existence and there's already appropriate facilities. 
Um, perform, the proposal ensures that it's in conformance with parking and sign regulations. I think pending the um, submission of the parking plan, that will be something that we will find. And that with that pending submission, we'll be able to find that for Article Seven and Eight. Yeah, uh, with, um, uh, Mr. Chair, uh, which yep. just uh, re reminds me. So to add as an additional condition, so the board, the board observed uh, the so the applicant submit a, submitted a parking plan that shows four parking spaces, and on the site visit. You observed that there was uh, perhaps, um, you know, there was a car utilizing perhaps a fifth parking space, and it, it looked like the, it was a, you know, a safe and convenient location for a parking space. Yes. And tonight, you suggested that the applicant, um, as a way to, you know, get people off the street from parking on the street, to add another parking space on the property. So perhaps you should add a condition that the applicant submit an updated parking plan to show that fifth spot as shown as observed at the site visit um th th that singular. that's good it's a good point morning just saying oh, that's not a problem is it that's not a problem for me I, I made the assumption perhaps a faulty one that that would be included in the in the parking management plan that needs to be submitted to town officials we'll make wording there so that there's no confusion that's perfect that's good Thank you, Ms. Fall. Um, I think by the proposal provides for convenient and safe vehicular traffic. I think by um, observing the parking and reducing the and having a parking plan with a uh, tag on it will have less cars parked in the property back there, um, and that should provide for safer vehicular and pedestrian movement. Um, adequate space for off street loading is an applicable 10.389. Um, method of support waste. I think it's uh, we observed it. It it is consistent with what is else what is also in the neighborhood. Um, Ten point three nine zero proposals ensure protection from flood hazards. This not in a flood zone. Three nine one deals with um, historic scenic features. It's not applicable. Three nine two deals with landscaping. Um, pursuant to the question that Miss Park had, Parks had. A, a, it is vegetated. Um, I think it does a good job of shielding the neighbors. Um, I think a good management plan would probably do a better job on the on some of the grass in the front, but you'll have to, you can take care of that. I think ten point three nine three. Um, the board wishes. Uh, I think deals with um, minimizing light. I think we've dealt with that in the dark high. Compliance requirement for replacement of fixtures. Um, it's not, there's no steep slopes. There are no, uh, it's not in disharmony with respect to terrain. Um, stories area to docks, dumpsters. That's, it seems to me it's consistent with the neighborhood. The proposal provides adequate recreational facilities. That's not, um, that's not applicable to the project. The proposal is in harmony with the general purpose and intent of the bylaw. I think that's the case. Um, in terms of the, the last thing, in terms of the trash, Mr. St. Hilaire, do you have any uh, plans to have like a fence or any kind of screening for the trash can? Oops. To, to be honest, Mr. Chair, I hadn't uh, given a lot of thought to that. I, I was focused on kind of complying with the existing uh, permit with the exception of the condition that was requested to be removed, but we can certainly be mindful of that and find a location that would be out of public view. Does anybody on the board have a concern about the trash or the or screening of the trash receptacles? Okay. Um, take a look at it and see what you can do to reduce the Visibility but from the street, perhaps screening would be would make a lot of sense. Um, I move that we um, accept the conditions as stated, and that we make those findings that I've run through on the um, this application. All right, I would accept the motion that we adopt those conditions and that we um, make the findings as I stated. Do I have such a motion? So moved. Mr. Maxfield. Do I have a second? Second. Ms. Parks. Um, 
Any discussion? Let's, we'll vote on those two things before we vote on the, um, the application. Um, if there's no discussions, it's the roll call vote. Uh, Chair votes aye. Ms. Parks? Aye. Oh, hold on. Um, one question before you yep. um, vote on this. So, um, so for this application specifically, are you all set? Um, you reviewed the pre you reviewed the conditions from the previously approved special permit. You've added new conditions, and um, and um, they provided all the information needed for condition for the new condition too. So, so in a way, if Kilogren uh, does purchase this property. Uh, the the new owner would not need to come back. That's okay. As long so, as yes, that's my that's my intent. Uh, as long as the parking and other information that we we ask of the prospective owner is submitted to the town, um, they would not need to come back. So, d would the board like to make a motion to transfer this special permit to Kilogren? Um, yes, but I think we should do that after we adopt the conditions and the, oh, okay. Okay. after we adopt the conditions and the um, um, the findings. Yep. So back to the vote. I vote aye. Ms. Parks. Aye. Mr. Maxfield. Aye. Mr. Gilbert. Aye. And Mr. Cochran. Aye. Uh, so we've adopted the findings and we've made the findings and adopted the conditions the vote now the question before the board is shall we um, approve the special permit application and transfer the uh, special permit to the new owner Ms. Uh, Kilrin properties is there any discussion on that motion Mr. Maxfield I'm sorry. Do we do we have a, a motion for it, or are we just discussion discussing um, prospect of we, it? We, we, it's, it's what's bef we haven't had a motion put before us yet, but that's what we should we should discuss that before we do it, um, okay. or we can discuss it once we make the motion too. Either way, but I was just opening it up to see if anybody had comments or questions. Well, uh, I, I'll just go with procedure and, and make the yeah. motion. Oh. All right, Mr. Chair, can I just can I just say subject to the actual conveyance to Killerine properties? I'm, I'm sorry, we did transfer this to just, Killerine yeah, properties. Yeah, but just so you're saying that you're making a motion to transfer the permit to Killerine properties, I'm just saying make that subject to them actually buying purchasing it. The property. <laughs> yes, yeah. Okay. yeah. Okay. I, I don't want your crop, we're, we're not transferring this without purchasing the property. So. Okay. There'd be the new owner killer in properties, right? It would only be upon sale. Good clarification. Thank you. Good point. Um, so we have a motion in front of us. We we need a second. I'll second. Mr. Gilbert seconds. Uh, now we can have discussion on the motion. Looks like we've got consensus, mm -hmm. or at least silence. So in that, that's good. All right. Um, Without objection, we'll move to a vote. The chair votes aye. Ms. Parks? Aye. Mr. Maxfield? Aye. Mr. Gilbert? Aye. Mr. Cochran? Aye. All right, congratulations, gentlemen. Thank you very much. Thank you. You bet. All right, the next order of business is ZBA 22-05, Lane v. Floyd, request a special permit to modify the previously approved special permit ZBA FY 2011-04 in order to remove condition 13, which states this permit shall expire upon change of ownership. Located at 204206 Belchertown Road, Map 15C, Parcel 32, Neighborhood Residence District, RN Zoning District. Are there any disclosures? Um, we did have a site visit uh, on Tuesday. Uh, we walked around the prop. We began in the prop in the parking lot. Walked around the property. Looked at the parking spaces available. Uh, entered the property and both uh, two, both 204 and 206. 
We were escorted to the property by the property manager. Um, we looked at the, each of the rooms, pictures were taken by staff of each of the rooms. Um, how the tenants were there, they were, um, they, they were, um, they shared their house easily and uh, now we're, we're not disturbed by our presence. Um, we walked outside, went to the second unit, did the same thing, um, came back, observed the land, um, and the we did notice one light up front was um, not working, but it wasn't a door that was over a door that does not, um, it doesn't seem to be used at all for, uh, um, for entrance or egress to the building. But other than that, it was pretty, it was just an observation of what the state of the property. I will say that it seemed that the, the property was well managed. The property, the grounds were well managed. It was clean um, and free of trash. Um, the, the, the rooms themselves um, seemed to be in good shape. And I, I found that it was a very well, it looks to be a well managed property currently. Um, I, I also wanna say on this case, one more time, it's a it's a imposition on we understand it's an imposition on the tenants and on the property owner to go into the into the property, um, but they were I appreciate their cooperation and allowing us to do that. It gives us a better sense of what we're looking at. And in this case, I want to thank the uh, property management firm and the tenants for being accommodating us in, in our visit. Um, any other thing you want to add to the site visit? I want to go through the submissions from town staff on this property. Hold on just a second. So submissions are um, application for the special permit a management plan and application memo from attorney Tom Reedy dated August 26th, excuse me, yeah, August 26th. Waiver request from memo from Mr. Reedy, August 26th, previously approved ZBA uh, special permit decision from 2011. Uh, applicants waiver request, site plan, building plan, lighting plan, landscape plan, sign plan, and management plan. Uh, zoning, for just additional requirements for apartments. Uh, planning staff submissions include a zoning map, a residential rental property permit, and a project application report dated, one dated October 8th. Also, we have um, site from the, uh, visit, photos from the site visit, an existing leach for 204 Belchertown Road, and an existing leach for, lease for 206 Belchertown Road. Is there anything else, Maureen, that we have? I believe there, there was an email correspondence from Mr. Reedy from October the 26th. Okay, I missed that. All right, um, who's here for to represent the applicant? I am Mr. Chair, uh, Tom Reedy, Reedy. Of Bacon Wilson, yeah, out of Amherst, 6 Southeast Street. All right, you may proceed. Thanks. Um, so I think you did a nice job uh, recapping the site visit for those you for those of you who are out there. I think you saw um, some pretty well maintained properties. Belchertown Road is a little bit different animal, or I should say, a lot different animal than Phillip Street. You got farmland uh, right behind it, um, preserved farmland, um, much more space. Uh, I had just before this meeting sent over. I had found those. Uh, rental permit parking plans and they each show eight spaces so on and, and I'm conflating a little bit because I'm also we saw both um, 204 206 and 192 194 so just focusing on 204 206 it showed eight spaces as you all saw there was sufficient parking off street um, sufficient maneuverability off street uh, and then overall just a pretty well maintained site um, you know, I, I haven't seen a project application, an updated project application report for this, but um, assuming based upon the last conversation from the last public hearing for 19 Phillips, if, if the board, I don't know if the board is thinking about imposing the same condition for here, 
I guess my only comment there for consideration is one Phillips, no, 19 Phillips Street, one of it was in the uh, RG zoning district. And this one is in the RN zoning district. As you probably all are aware, non owner occupied duplexes in the RG zoning district have a, a mandatory expiration upon change of ownership. So that was different because what you were just dealing with with 19 Phillips was a converted dwelling, which doesn't have that requirement. So that's how we were able to do what we were able to just do. But I just wanted to put that out there for consideration. Um, I know in the October 6th project application report, the board had mentioned that a future owner would come back at a public meeting, which I know oftentimes in the RN zoning district, the board has done when they've um, eliminated this condition. So I just wanted to get that out uh, to have the conversation about um, given the somewhat apples and oranges nature of Beltratown Road where these units are and 19 Phillips Street or that RG area um, closer to the university. So, I mean, I'm, I'm happy to answer any questions, but I hopefully the site visit, um, you know, satisfied the board with what, what's going on out there and, and how it's being managed. <laughs> Rob or Dave or Maureen, can you clear up the point made by Mr. Reedy regarding the differences in RN and how that affects this application? It does not now require that the, does the zone, are you saying Mr. Reedy that the zoning bylaw now requires the lease expiration on change of ownership? In the RG the per zoning permit. district, for non-owner non occupied duplexes, right. it requires the permit to expire upon change of ownership. So that is not a modifiable provision for non-owner occupied. That's RG, that's not RN. Correct, Co right. correct, correct. Right. So right. I was just drawing a comparison to say 19 okay. Phillips, converted dwelling. I can much more appreciate what we just did based upon the sensitivity of the area versus and distinguished from the RN which has no corollary for non-owner occupied duplex, which these are under the, the use code. So that was just an right. observation. RNRG is all confusing uh, to me still. Um, and I just wanted to make clarify that there is no, no mandatory expiration in this case upon change of ownership. That is correct. Other than the, lead, the con existing condition of the, lead, of the special permit. Correct. Great. Um, one of the things that that um, I found, I mean, it's not a question of the current management. The current management seems to be doing a really good job. That was a, a well-run, I think it looked to me to be a well-run um, um, apartment house for students, uh, or two plus for students. I was, I was pleased with it and the property looks in good shape. The question is how do we make sure that that continues with the next owner? And it seems to me you can't do that unless you have the ability to have the new owner come, the prospective owner come in and talk prior to the to the um, transfer of property, just like we did in the last one. And I, it seems to me that that's the right way to do this. In this case, we don't have a prospective owner. We don't have a bona fide uh, offer out there. And I think it's premature for us, my feeling is it's premature for us to uh, grant the, the um, remove the, remove the, the existing condition that um, the lease expires without replacing it with something. And I think the, what, what we just replaced with a 19 is a good model for that. And it allows the owner when he has a, a, um, a new bona fide offer to come back in to know what to expect. He won't be facing the uncertainty that 19 Phillips Street did uh, when we were trying to figure it out. It would be out there, it would be known, it would be expected. And I, I think that would make a lot of sense from my standpoint. Um, but I would like to see what other people think, if they think that this um, condition should be replicated, at least for the time being, um, as, as what we do until we can have more time to talk about it at a later point in time um, at post administrative meeting. But I think it's, the, I think it is a good way to proceed, but I'd like to get the feeling of other members of the board. Mr. Maxfield. Yeah, I mean, I, I'm, I'm definitely sympathetic to that, that point of, you know, if they, we were doing this maybe three months from now, um, we might just be more in favor of removing the condition entirely. But 
much like anybody who was applying for an ADU before inclusionary zoning, just the timing is off. So I, um, I, I think until we can have a, a more of a discussion of, of how we want to go forward this uh, or go handle these going forward, I, I think we should stick mm -hmm. to the, the condition as, as it's written, as in uh, written in the previous case. I, I'm getting some head shaking, which are yes, nods, so, and thumbs up. So I sense a consensus here. Um, I guess I have no other comments. Mr. Reedy, you've made your, you've done a good job representing your client. I think I want to give the public a chance to comment if they, uh, if there is anybody that wishes to speak. Um, and then we can respond. You could respond to any public comment if need be. not uh, Maureen I don't see anybody wanting to speak okay so I would entertain a motion that we move to a public meeting while keeping the public hearing open and that we um, move, move to the public meeting keep the public meeting open so that we can um, take other information if need be do I have that motion so moved. Do I have a second? Mr. Cochran, you put your hand up, you beat him, you beat Mr. Maxfield. All right. <laughs> the vote occurs on the motion. Unless there's discussion, I can't imagine. Um, I vote aye. Ms. Parks? Aye. Mr. Maxfield? Aye. Mr. Gilbert? Aye. Mr. Cochran? Aye. All right, we're in the public meeting to discuss this um, application. Um, it seems that I think that the condition that we should impose on this application is the same one that we applied on 19 Phillips Street. Um, remove the, what is it, condition, is it seven in this case, Maureen? Uh, yes, I believe so. I, I think, think this one's 13. Oh, it's 13. It's, oh, it's 13. It's, no, no, 13 is 206. We're on 206, 204, 206 Belcher Town Road, right? Correct. Yeah. Okay. So it's remove condition 13 and replace Correct. it with um, the condition that we just voted for, for 19 Phillips Street. Um, I see no other conditions that we need to apply in this instance. It's prospective. And I think we have to make one finding on 10.38, and that is that this um, is to be uh, consistent with the neighborhood to avoid um, and be consistent with the town uh, master plan and to um, avoid um, um, nuisance and um, Ensure the, the quiet appreciation, the quiet uh, appreciation of, of fellow property and neighbor owners, neighbors and fellow property owners in the area. Um, so I think we meet 10.381. As a those that's so the condition is the same. 10.381 is the finding. Um, is there any objection to those? If not, um, I move that we, I would entertain a, a motion that we approve the, the amendment to the existing special permit with conditions, um, which includes in the Phillip, same as the Phillip Street conditions and the finding that we are consistent with 10.381 uh, of the uh, bylaws. Do I have such a motion? And just to clarify, so you reviewed, um you know, from the Phillips Street uh, application, um, you re referenced, um, I'll call it condition two, um, which was like the permit will expire unless they come back, the prospective buyer comes back, dot, 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 dot. Did you, did, right. did the board wanna go through the other uh, conditions listed? Um, they are um, pretty much the same, but um, from the other one, I, they are the same from the other ones, um, from the other applications, but. I just wanted to 
clarify whether folks wanted to go through that or not. But these are, well, these are all the stand, I'm sorry, Maureen, these are the standard I don't, you know, I think some of these, we should go through standard ones, um, but we know we're not, we are granting them the ability to, to uh, transfer the ownership under certain conditions, but we're not, we're not changing, they're, they're not, we're not in a position, I think, to impose new, to impose too many new requirements upon the property owner, because I don't think we have, um, Aside from, well, I'd have to look at the existing conditions, but I don't know that we want to impose additional conditions beyond um, the project, beyond number two, um, which are pretty much standard. I'm, I'm guessing, I'm wondering why we need to put additional conditions on at this time, on this one, because they got to come back if they're, if and when there would be a, a um, a sale perspective ownership, but at that point in time, we should um, put them additional property, additional conditions. Sure, that, that's if, fine. Okay. Anybody else have a, a different opinion on that? Mr. Mora, Mr. Westchevitz, am I missing something? Or members of the board? I just think we change, I think we should just change the, uh, the transfer condition and move forward. Sure. All right. Do I have um, a motion to to, um, to approve the special permit, the change of the special permit app, um, condition number thirteen to the Phillips language? Um, and motion to move. Is there a second? Second. Any discussion? All in favor. Uh, all in favor. I vote aye. Ms. Parks? Aye. Max, Mr. Maxfield? Aye. Mr. Gilbert? Aye. Mr. Cotton? Aye. We've decided on 192, 194. Belcher. These are confusing to me. We just did 192 and 190. We did 204 and 206, and now we're doing 192 and 194. Um, I want to speed up this process. I don't think we have to go through the whole thing again, except I have to say that we have before us um, an application to um, request a special permit to modify the previously approved special permit ZBA 2011 3 to move condition 12, which states this permit shall expire upon change of ownership located on 192 194 Belchertown Road, Map 15C, parcel 64, neighborhood residence district, RN zoning district. Um, any disclosures? We had a site visit. The site visit was exact, exactly the same as it was with the previous property with all the existing. And I also want to um, repeat the commendations to the property owner and the tenants for letting us um, impose on their life. But I don't think there's any reason to have a long discussion on this unless anybody on the board does. So I'd like to move, I would entertain a motion. Uh, I would like to see the public comment first. If there's any public comment, we do need to have that. And if not, I would entertain a motion to move to a public meeting while keeping the public hearing open in case there's additional information that we wish to hear. I think we'll make this, Mr. Maxfield. Uh, so moved. Second. Second. Uh, the discussion, vote occurs, I vote aye. Ms. Parks? Aye. Mr. Maxfield? Aye. Mr. Gilbert? Aye. Mr. Cochran? Aye. Great. Um, I think we just do the same thing we did with the last one, folks. I think that we put in the 19th, the Phillips Street provision. We make the findings under 10.380 and 381 that um, these findings help to ensure that the neighborhood will not be disturbed or made worse by change in ownership. And that's the reason for the change in the, the uh, condition 12. Um, unless, is, there, is there any discussion to that? So I would entertain a motion to um, make the change to condition 12, that's Phillips Street, to make the findings under 10.380 and 10.381, and to uh, approve 
the special permit modification uh, with conditions. Do I have, a, is there, Mr. Maxfield moves, is there a second? Second. We've got a tie, we've got two seconds. Uh, I defer to Eric. <laughs> <laughs> Any discussion? If not, the motion occurs on the, the vote occurs on the motion. I vote aye. Ms. Parks? Aye. Mr. Maxfield? Aye. Mr. Gilbert? Aye. Mr. Cochran? Oh, aye. Great. All right, motion carries. Thank you very much. All right, thank you. Good seeing you. Um, next order of business is public comment on any matter not before the board tonight. I don't see any. Next order of business is anything not anticipated within the last 48 hours. I have nothing in that regard. Mr. Maxfield. I just want to say, um, I really want to start thinking about doing administrative meetings to try to make it productive. I know one of the things I'm thinking about uh, that I would like to do, probably not going to, but to get the process moving, but it won't be done uh, by the time we have an administrative meeting in um, November. I'd like to start even going through just our own process of when you grab the form to apply for a special permit and go through it, I'd like to see really what that looks like. So I feel like we've been hearing from uh, the, the past two people saying that it was a very difficult, confusing process. And I, we, we, we get, we end up getting a, the, the end result, but I'm not really sure what goes into uh, getting that final product that even comes to us. So I, I'd like to see that. Um, I'm not even really sure how to, how to go about that where I'm not actually applying for a real special permit but that's something, I don't know, uh, Maureen, if that's something I could work with you on uh, at some point in the coming weeks or so uh, to get that, that process going. I know that's one of the things I'd like to look at to just get a better idea of when someone actually starts the process of coming to us, what does it really look like? Because um, it's one of those things I can't imagine even I sitting on the ZBA would be even able to, to really get through this application and bring something to this board without um, the assistance of, of probably somebody like Tom Reedy or um, you know, some other person who has that, that specialty of, of dealing with, with local municipalities. So it's something I, I personally wanna look at. I don't know if any other board members wanna look at that as well, um, but just have a better sense of what our actual process looks like for somebody going through it before it even comes to us. I think that's a good, subject for um, an administrative meeting. I would encourage you to, to um, work with Maureen and find out on your own as first, because I think it's something that'd be instructive, but I do think it'd be something that everybody would benefit from, Dylan. I think that would be a, a good idea. We have a lot on the agenda. We may need two administrative meetings. Um, it's not the end of the world, but that would be, uh, I, I think it, all the, the process things are important, especially with the newer members of the board um, and our alternate members. We want to have them fully, in, as much as possible, fully informed on the process. I know we were. I know there are one of the matters. So we'll put that on the agenda, and maybe for the first or the second um, administrative meeting. I also know that we have a, a vacancy on the board, and the town council will be considering that. I, don't, I haven't heard if they have appointed anybody yet. But we have, uh, I'm, we do have one vacancy, and I hope that we'll have an alternate member uh, in the near future appointed to our board. We lost um, the the guy we served with all the time. His name I know very well, but I'm blank on it right now. Keith. Uh, you mean Keith. Craig. Or, no, Keith, or, Keith has been gone for a while. I thought he was replaced yeah, by him. Yep, he hasn't been replaced. But um, got Peter Barrick. Is that who you're thinking of? No. 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 Uh, uh, right. military contractor, uh, a former military contractor, what was his name? I'm blanking on it. We, we serve with him all the time. He was on the four member panel with us not too long ago. Craig he, Meadows. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, he, oh, he didn't leave. Oh, he just has been unable to be at these meetings. 
I, th I thought he was taking over as a full member. Is he, did he not? He's he is, still associate. He is a full member now, but he's, but he just wouldn't, wasn't able to be at these other meetings. Yeah. Oh, we're filling an associate member position. Building an associate member. Yeah. Okay. There we go. That that's yeah. right. Yeah. yeah. All right. Any other? Maureen, when's yeah, our next so meeting? So the next re regularly scheduled meeting for November. So uh, town offices are closed on. Let me go to the November calendar. The 11th. The 11th. Uh, so November 11th, uh, town offices are closed because of Veterans Day. And town offices are closed on November 25th because of Thanksgiving. So it looks like we're only going to have one meeting in November, November the 18th. At least that's a regular scheduled meeting. Um, I do have a potential public meeting um, to add to that agenda, and perhaps we could hold an administrative meeting prior, um, so have it um, that evening. Um, what do folks feel about that? My one question would be if the subject matter is involves a removal of the expiration, I'd rather have it after we have a discussion. If the subject matter is something else and we can and we can run through it quickly if it's not highly contentious uh, we can do the subject matter for the uh, the um, application first and then go into the administrative meeting yeah but, but um, if it's a lot if, it, if it's a if it deals with that same subject we're going to be working on I, I think I want to talk about that first amongst the members before we act on another application Sure. Um, well, let, uh, uh, you and I can speak up, um, outside of this yeah. meeting um, to yeah. see what uh, which order would make sense. Um, but sure. are folks uh, available uh, for the November the 18th? And I guess I should ask the other uh, ZBA members not present as well, as well for the administrative portion. Yep. Send out a doodle. But I'm, I'm here. I'll be available then. As long as it's second and third Thursday, I've already got it marked in my calendar in perpetuity. Wait, so this scenario, I think, would be the third. 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 Be the, the, third. 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 The 18th. So does, yeah, the 18th work? Um, I might have a contact with the Board of Licensing, if that's the case. Um, but well, I'll, I'll find that out. I'll get back to you on that once I have an answer. Okay, well, luckily this, um, it would be a public meeting and then the administrative portions would be a public meeting. So uh, I don't feel like we need to um, finalize the time and date at this moment. So yeah, we can sort it out by uh, like a doodle poll or e just e regular email. Perfect. Okay, folks, anything else? Yes, Mr. Maxfield. Just if nothing, I'm making the motion to adjourn. <laughs> All right. Is there a second? Mr. Gilbert, this second. motion is not debatable. <laughs> I vote aye. Ms. Parks? Aye. Mr. Maxfield? Aye. Mr. Gilbert? Aye. And Mr. Cochran? Aye. We are adjourned. Thank you, everybody. I appreciate your time on this, and I think we've come up with a